this. Hello, Ajahn Jay. You can share your project. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Dr. Shawalak. We have colleagues from other university. Good afternoon, Associate Dr. Chantima and Dr. Wang and everyone. Thanks for letting me join the session. I'm very glad to hearing from you about writing the paper for publication. Thank you very much. Thank you, B. Yeah. <laughs> I do miss Thailand a lot as I travel to Thailand many times. And also okay. by let's, I let's my weddings in Sum, uh, Sumatra, uh, what, what's the island? Sum, Sumala, or what's the island names? So I have very good connections with Thailand all the time. I'm sorry, I'm at home, so I did not dress up for joining the session. But anyway, very happy, and I um, have some questions and ask you later after you finish your presentation or uh, lecture for us. Thank you, Dr. Chantima, for letting me in and say hello to all students and wish you all can write a good paper. So Dr. Chantima, would you like to start on time or would you like to wait a little bit more? I think we should start right now and then the other can join later. Okay. So, uh, okay. so let me um officially welcome everyone, including Dr. Wang, to um, our UTCC Doctoral Communication as Visiting Professor Lecturer Sunny One today. And we are so like glad and honored to have Dr. Wang here with us today, um, which he's going to deliver a topic on writing for publication effective research writing techniques. And today I'm sure that all of you are very excited um, to hear from Dr. Wang. Um, from his experience, because he has a lot of experience in um, doing research and writing, also publishing his academic work. Uh, let me share you uh, the screen of Dr. Wang's CV, <laughs> so so that I can introduce him like officially to to all of you before he gets started. One second. Can you all see the screen, right? Okay, so um, 
Associate Professor Dr. Wang is the head of department in journalism and advertising at Xiamen University, Malaysia. Um, he is the director of the Center of ASEAN and Chinese uh, Screen Studies. And Dr. Wang also holds a PhD in film and broadcasting from University Xi'an, Malaysia. If I pronounce it incorrectly, I'm so sorry. And he also served as a jury for um, several international film festivals held in China and Malaysia. He is also um, appointed as the programmer for Malaysia International Film Festival. So he's very active in, in academic and also in like uh, the film industry. And he is the visiting scholar to School of Journalism, Media and Culture at Cardiff University in UK in uh, 2019. And currently he is the Vice President of International Network on Media and Communication. And he's an expert fellow for Asian and Chinese Language Cinema Research Center in Jing Normal University in China. And the area, um, the research area of his interest include um, contemporary film theory and practice, media and cultural the uh, theory, film history and gender representation in film. And he is um, his educational background. He's got his BA in advertising in China. And also he got his master degree and PhD in film and broadcasting from University of Xi'an, Malaysia in Malaysia. And this is the working experience of Dr. Wang, which is a lot. So I'm not going to read all of this, but I'm going to scroll down so that you can see his experience in like writing and publishing. So that if today, I think we have like an expert with us. If you have any questions about writing or writing techniques for publication, um, you can feel free to ask. I'm sure that he will be very happy to answer all of the questions that you have. So you can use the comment box, uh, the, the chat box, right? If you have any questions and at the end, we can do the session of Q&A uh, with Dr. Wang. Right. Dr. Wang, are you? Are you okay with the, the the format, or do you want anyone to be able to interrupt you during the speech, whatever you like? Yeah, I think this is just fine. Um, I will just go according to the flow. Thank you so much for introducing me by showing my um, resume. But of course, yeah. um, this is some of the information most of people may interest to understand about myself. But of course, um, I also work for some of. Uh, peer reviewed journals internationally. So uh, these are not included. So today I will share you guys with some of the writing techniques from reviewers and also editors point of view. This will be also beneficial for you guys to understand how to prepare your submissions to different journals or different uh, publication uh, organization. So this is uh, the information all about myself. You can also find myself from different uh, keywords at Google. If you're interested, you will understand me by key in my name, Wang Changsong, plus youth firm. You may find my English book at Amazon. I also publish Chinese book on film industry by looking at the genre analysis. Uh, there's also Chinese book available. There are a few uh, articles you can find from Scopus and also uh, Web of um, Analytical which is also called, called the Web of Science. So you can find some of the uh, articles over there. Unfortunately, for the book chapters of the OSS uh, platform, except the one which is published in 2020, you can search my name, uh, Wang Changsong, and you can also search the Narrating Sitting, uh, which is the second one. This is available at Google Book. But for the rest, is actually not really openly uh, accessible for the general public. Certainly, um, I'm also engaging with uh, different organizations, such as a uh, film festival. Um, since last year, I was appointed as a programmer for the only, the only international film festival in Malaysia, which is called the Malaysia International Film Festival, MeFest. This year, they also appointed me as a selection committee, which means I still involved with all the film selection. Um, very frequently, I was interviewed by different media by sharing my insights on the uh, politic, culture, media, and uh, some other aspects in general. And uh, I was uh, very actively to be exposed to by, by media in both China and Malaysia. 
So it won't be surprising to see my pictures, my statement uh, taken by different medias in uh, Chinese language and English in the media organizations in both nations I mentioned. But today um, it's not about the, my own achievement, it's all about the things I wish to transfer to you as a student who pursuing PhD studies at UTCC. And of course, this is also a session for people to refresh some of the point that your lecturer may share with you all. I certainly believe your lecturers give you a lot of guidance and also helpful instructions for you to complete a PhD research project. I understand in different institutions, you may also require to fulfill different conditions for graduation. Um, although I'm looking for, um, am I lagging here if it's my internet connection is fine? My internet connection is not stable, am I right? Yeah, you you like lost the connection just a brief just I think briefly. Be, yeah, because it's rainy outside, um that may cause the disconnections. Um lately the the weather in Malaysia is not stable. We always have the moody clouds and also rainy days. So it may happen. So if I face this kind of a problem, probably you can text in the chat box, I will be aware of this. And um there will be different um, conditions because I'm not only work for Shaman University as a head and also director over here, but I'm also helping um, University Malaya as the external PhD supervisor. So I have experienced different conditions at different institutions. I'm not quite sure what is your current condition for graduation as a PhD student in your, in your university. So based on my understanding that the University of Malaya requires students to publish at least one web paper science journal article, or you have to publish Scopus journal articles. So this become a very important steps for students to graduate from the PhD studies. I'm not sure whether you guys have a similar conditions or any requirement, but it's kind of a trend. You also have it. Yeah, okay. So it's kind of a trend in general that you may witness these kind of conditions in most of the institutions which offer PhD studies. With that, we have to place our effort and also the right track to develop our writing skills, ensure we are able to publish something before graduation. So this becomes the reason why you are here. So hopefully this becomes something that you will be uh, feeling useful after listening to some of the point. But certainly please allow me to share screen will see some of the point in a clear man in a clear manner. It doesn't allow me to share. <laughs> we we can see you. Oh you, you can see the screen. Okay. The topic, uh, the topic over here is all about writing for publication, and this become the goal for today that we are going to achieve, and that would become some of the things I also wish to start from two point of view. One is the reviewers' point of view, and the others will be from the editor's point of view. Um, based on my experience as editor, I will always be the first person who take first glance of any submission. So there will be definitely certain criteria for me to check through according to the journal's requirement. However, as reviewer, we also have to ensure that this paper can definitely reach the qualifications as a ready paper. So. If we do have certain disagreement or the way to justify the room for improvement, reviewer deserve right for uh, writing certain comments and feedback. And decisions could be made by the reviewers according to the quality of a submission. When this kind of process takes place in publication, so 
we usually follow some of the principles are generally complied. Is that, am I still lagging here? Yeah, we can hear you clearly. And we see like, okay. Oh, hey, yes. Okay. So we usually follow the 4A principle. It may not be the same or consistently the um, exactly from one organization or the journals, but we basically follow this kind of a principle, which is a 4A principle. This 4A principle primarily relies on aim, audience, awareness, and articulating. This becomes some of the things as a reviewer, as editors will check through whether you address these four A's clearly. As an article always have a certain objective, we do have an aim to achieve, but we have to understand this is something that I may not touch at this moment. I'm not here to guide you guys to looking at how to construct, how to, uh, how to make a feasible abstract or research goal. But this is something very general for you to understand that when you try to produce an article, you have to look at two possible scale. As editor and a reviewer, we also try to look at these very carefully. If we try to look at your own benefits, that is including career funding and reputation. And this is the reason why we try to produce a more good articles which potentially may generate citations and also discussions and also other forms of um, so-called uh, argument. Basically, if we are wishing to obtain a PhD, you are looking at this as a career path, or maybe as a teaching staff, you are publishing the articles for confirming your own areas of expertise. Certainly, when we try to get the supportive fundings from different organizations, either internally or externally, the publications become the M, also maybe the project itself can become the M. When we have all this clearly spelled out in your own personal scale, you actually are constructing your own reputations in the so-called domestic and also international platforms. But of course, we also have to understand when we try to produce a research project, does this also clearly address some of the knowledge that has been well discussed in the international scaling, which can allow you to discuss and address the gap in the existing study. That we, that's the reason why this is also the clear goal for you to achieve to emphasize or further the knowledge. This could be resulting, uh, the result could be used, tested, potentially influence the changes for policies. This is some of the things we also see very carefully. Um, I also write a lot of uh, articles based on invitation um, as because maybe I understand some of them uh, know me very well um, since I start to do research. Some of them uh, may know me from the industries, events, functions, etc. So I have a different kind of invitations. I'm not sure whether this is existed in Thailand. It's like, okay, I am requested to write something. So when you are requested for journal, newspaper, magazine, the audiences will be different or vary from each other. So for example, if I'm writing something for the um, policymaker or is targeting the researchers like yourself, or even it can be talking to the lay audience. This can be very much more different from each other. For example, lately I published various of Chinese article for the uh, Chinese journals. The way I write Chinese article will be very much more different from the way I express my thought in English. I understand the way we compose an ideas will be very much more different. The way to convince the audience to take away my ideas will also be very different. This is also lies on the language usages when you try to look at this is not included over here. But in general, when you look at these three pictures, policymakers, researchers, and lay audiences, that also determine you are looking at the different source of a publication. That also tells you to identify different journal in different way. This is a very important for you to understand what is actually the principles for you 
to investigate and understand the particular invest the discipline of the journal. Second, if you're trying to produce article for the peers like yourself are researchers, you are trying to get the need for general templates or formula that we usually use. However, if we try to address the issues or any phenomena to lay audience, it may even look at the geographic regions that particular publications will publish. So this is all about the audience. And certainly, when we try to produce an article, we also try to look at these uh, correlations. How will you take the existing research as one of the source to dig further? Or were you trying to take this existing, existing research as a debate ground for you to critique the existing trend of a discussion? The existing research could be another source for you to identify the direction which can be applied according to the context that you are interested to explore. The existing research may also serve various functions for you to identify the variables for you to define the correlations. The existing research also can serve a function for you to understand the particular um, aspect for you to construct a survey questions or design any kind of open questions to understand and collect data. So the existing research becomes something that you have to be aware in the first place. When you try to get this understanding, you are potentially uh, able to contribute to the policy base if it's relevant to politics, or you are able even to influence the current issue. One of the things is focus on the awareness. And lastly, the articulating. the articulating is all about your ideas. How to articulate your ideas in the format that we recognize. We do understand different institutions may give students a guide lines or any kind of a forms of instructions. So we always well informed about the structure. So that's the reason why structure always come in first. Once we understand the logic and also the meaning of having such structure, you are only able to develop the ideas. The ideas could be based, could be developed based on the structure itself. If you're able to present and express ideas clearly and concisely, that would be definitely allows you to move to another le level. So this is the reason I put all the, these things next to a stale case, which including the work count as well. So I may also ask you guys a very simple question. Looking at the word limit, how will you see these uh, a PhD students when you try to explore the potential journals for publication? How will you see the relationship between the word limit and plagiarism result? Do you see any relations between this? If you see the relations, you can type one. If you do not see any clear relationship between the work count and a plagiarism requirement, you can type two. So I can see how many relationships. Um, yes, I see people take type one. Only one person type one. <laughs> Don't feel shy. I can just under, try to try to get you guys um, interact in this way. If you just feel that you are uncertain of this uh, relationship between the work count and pleasure reason, it's totally fine. I will definitely touch on this as well. But when we try to look at the last A articulating, we may probably look at the structure and the conclusion as a very important and vital uh, sections. And this is some of the things I may take it very formally. Um, perhaps you may find, oh, it's kind of a typical class or lecture. I don't want to use this kind of opportunity to express. So this is something that I need to be very official. As the editor and the reviewers, we always looking at this certain aspect which may determine the quality that fit to the requirement for publication. It can go beyond these four A's because we as researchers, we may have our own principles for any kind of a judgment, but it won't go away uh, from these four A's. So from these slides on word, I will take it a very casual and um, I can even chat with you guys. You can also speak if you wish to uh, interact with me. And 
I also want to get you guys to respond to um, the questions that do you guys have any checklist in your mind? Maybe you don't have any kind of a physical checklist for you to tick for publication. Do you have any kind of a checklist in your mind before you something? If you have it, you can type one. If you don't have any form of a checklist in your mind or even a paperwork, you can type two. I want to see how many people type over there. Okay, two. How about the others? So far, I only see several um, of you guys type one and two. Um, my question is quite simple. If you don't have it, if you don't have any kind of a checklist for any um, submission to journal, you can type two. If you do have it in either uh, kind of a internal in your mind, that you can type one. All right, so this is actually some of the things I wish to introduce to you all that can be very helpful for you to prepare any kind of a journal publications. So I will continue this kind of interactions later. Um, just now ask you guys a question. Um, how do you see the relationship between plagiarism and also the um, turning requirements? So these are some of the things I wish to discuss first. Um, if you have any experience by submitting your journal article to uh, the desired one. So you probably will understand the editor may ask you to relook at your pleasure reason. As the editor may see the potential for publication, however, he identified the issues of a pleasure reason because you do not maybe do citation properly. However, the rate usually range between uh, 10 to 15. According to my experience, I might be wrong. So it depends on the word limit. For example, some of the journal only accept the article, which is around 5,000 words. If the article length is on only 5,000 words, it may reduce the require, it may, the result for turning the, will be lower. It could be below 10 or even lower. However, if the word limit for the submission, it may range from 8,000 to 10,000, the turning result could be accepted between 10 to 15. So these are the experience I encountered because I experienced these kind of scenarios when I missed some in-text citation in a proper way. So the editors asked me to just do these necessary minor corrections before send over to any reviewer. So the percentage of plagiarism will dramatically decrease. When you reach this kind of a criteria, the editors are only to, uh, to, to proceed further. And that's also the reason why you have to ensure that you need to do a plagiarism test, which is called the plagiarism checker. You, I also introduced later. But in this checklist, I speak from the point that is avoiding to do so, which means if you wish to do any publications, try to avoid these few points, which means if you avoid these few mistakes, you probably may secure a chance for publication. So that's why in the first place is screening. You have to do a technical screening. I'm not sure how many of you guys do this kind of technical screening. Um, I, you also can type it. Let's say you finish your article writing and you just feel okay to publish, you will just simply submit to any potential journal that you are interested to publish, you can type one. If you go through any kind of a technique screening, you can type two, which means that you take it very seriously, look at technical screening, and you can type two. The technique screening, including these points, yeah, so how about your actions you usually do? Do you do screening? If you don't do screening, you can type one. If you really take technical screening seriously and you really do it, you can type two. Very good. I see a lot of people doing 
technical screening. And this is actually a very important first step for you to prepare any submission. Um, I believe that uh, these people who type in the chat box are lecturers, but I wish to see more re uh, responses from PhD students. If you are in the stage for publications, you definitely need to take these into consideration. When you try to understand the potential journals, I encourage every one of you guys to explore certain things, which including the author guideline that is in the fourth item I listed over here. Most of the time, we always neglecting um, the author guideline. We trust our own uh, way of ideas, uh, expressions. We also trust our own ways to do uh, any kind of article organization. However, if you explore author guideline, you will understand these or that particular journal have their own templates or format. These are very clearly stated in author guideline. The author guideline may also tell you clearly what is actually the procedures to go through. So you have to read the guidelines very carefully. Some of the journal, they have a very lengthy author guideline. Some of them may not have any intentions to give you clear author guideline. It may happen to some of the very reputated journals as they follow the standard of this publication organization. For example, if you look at the Taylor's and Francis, Taylor's and Francis, they have a similar template of a submission. Um, are you guys familiar with this kind of a press, Taylor's and Francis? You do, right? If you if you do heard about it, you can type one. If you don't, maybe you can type two. Okay, we have we have a professor's responses. If you as a student who never heard about it, don't worry about it. I'm trying to give you this information for you to explore. Let's take Taylor's and Francis as example. Some of the journal, they are not in the Q1 to Q4 ranking. They follow the general rules of Taylor's and Francis. So if you click the author guideline, they may not have a very particular guideline underneath this journal. However, they may refer you to the general guideline by Taylor's and Francis. It happened to many journals part under Taylor's and Francis. So this is another part for you to understand these organization's rules for author. This is beyond maybe one organization. You can also check through individual journals guidelines for authors. Um, I think uh, the one I, I assist Professor uh, uh, Jatima is the one, I think the Scopus journal is all about the public opinions. That one also one link called it author, which means most of the journals practice this very carefully and very professionally. So if you do not look at this very sincerely, it may give you best rejection. These are the few keywords you have to take away. For example, if you try to submit your articles to journal, if your article does not meet the basic guidelines stated in the author's guideline, it may receive best rejection, which means as editor, we deserve the right to reject your submission as we have no any reason to submit to reviewer for any processing or any kind of review process. So this is the reason why I encourage everyone you to look at author guideline. But for the other few items, submission into multiple journal, this is an ethical issue. If you are able to complete one article, however, you want to try to test this journal and try to submit to that the other journal at the same time or in a very close time frame, this is not a right way to do it. Uh, I just want to remind all of you guys, this is the, actually the publishing process. Every single submission, you have to declare that this submission even is not yet submitted to any other journal for consideration. Because it may happen. It happened to some of the journals, they may have the same reviewer. I can be very uh, sincere to you all. I personally encountered one mistake like this many years ago. Um, that is kind of a chaotic situation. I submit one of the journal to one uh, of, I think it's a Q3 or Q4 or Q2 journal. And then I forget I submit this article to this journal. 
because I always write few articles simultaneously. Uh, to be honest, I was in a progress period that I wish to publish as many as possible. So I write few articles at the same time. Once I finish, I have the necessary uh, procedures to do it. I submit to the journal. So one only happened one time. I submit to one of the journal, which is a Q2 or Q3 journal. And uh, it's under review. I don't have any test rejection. This is a very good sign. So which means editors are happy with the submission. So they send over to the reviewers. And eventually I discuss my articles with uh, another friends from another university. Um, as we attend one of the film festival event, after the event, we're having dinner together. We discuss, I, I tell the, the other uh, friends that I'm writing this kind of article lately. And uh, yeah, he mentioned, yeah, why don't you try this journal? Because this journal is a very regional journal. However, it's very reputed. It's a Q4. It's not bad. So I said, yeah, why not? Yeah, I just forget. I already submit my article to this Q2 or Q3 journal. And this Q4 journal also happy with my submission. So they also proceed with the review. The very dramatic things happen. The editors write to me. We have a reviewer tell us that we have a two reviewers tell that they receive the same submission from another journal. You can see how ashamed I feel with. So at that moment, I feel, oh my goodness, this is a very unethical. So what I have to do is to withdraw from all journals because I think I have a very bad record because I sub multiple journals with one submission. Certainly this article didn't publish. I even didn't try to submit it as well because this is a topic that has a very limited numbers of a reviewer who are able to review for this kind of a good ranking journals. The good ranking journals may have a pool of a reviewer they may have uh, these different expertise indications or indicators. So for example, Dr. Wang for this journal, we understand his expertise area is this. Editors will look at these areas and also pass record and send over. So they have a pool of a reviewer. When they receive this kind of a submission with the same smell or ingredients, so they were sent over to this particular kind of a coincidence. These two journals, they sent over exactly the same two reviewers. So the reviewers tell the editor, this article I see from other journal. So these are some of the things I wish to remind everyone you guys, you shouldn't make the same mistake as I did. It is actually can really, really influence your reputations. If it happens, let's say if I withdraw, I, I withdraw my submission. If some people will just prefer my article to be published by neglecting the, the ethical practice, it be published, another one published. So eventually, the people may see the similarities. It is called the self plagiarism. This is unethical. So ensure that you do not submit your articles to multiple journal. Incomplete submission may happen. It happened because you do not understand completely about the guidelines. So you may not fulfill some of the components, which is actually very vital for this particular journal. So they may consider is incomplete submission. So you have to also refer to the guideline. Unclear figure and table happened to me only once. Um, it's actually moving towards the publication stage, which means it's even not uh, at the technical screening stage. Um, I just use the uh, software to generate the pictures and images. And eventually when the people doing the printing, they discover the image quality does not reach requirement. So luckily they personally contact me for requesting a clearer version. So if happen as early at early age, you also potentially receive very critical comments. Um, this is very important. Language quality is some of the things as Asian, we always maybe not that very particular or sometimes we are very or extremely particular on as we try to express ourselves in another language that we are not really um, native as a native speaker. So I wish you guys to bear in mind that proofreading is very necessary. Proofreading is a process you have to do in the first place. This is technical screening. You may find different ways to do proofreading to ensure the quality of language. Number one, you can also try to explore some of the website which provide proofreading service. This including some of the reputed journals. If you search um, Elsevier 
or if you search Emirate, they do have their own proof reading service. After getting their service, they will even give you a certificate of proof reading. This is a kind of assurance of language fluencies. So this is a way for people to avoid any necessary or any unnecessary critical comments on language. So sometimes I'm so of the beginning, I always neglecting necessary proofreading process. I would just try to have someone to help me to do check, but it happens that the language become the poisons of the article. So if people have a no pleasant feelings of reading your article as either editor or reviewer, they probably may not have any reasons to let you pass. That's an obligation that general reviewers or audiences will examine and also criticize on. So language become a very important foundation. Remember that I have a several checklists for you to take, but this become the first pleasure submission into multiple journal, incomplete submission, author guideline, unclear figure table, language. This become a very foundation to make sure to complete. If you wish to know how to do, let's say, a plagiarism test, I will also tell you guys how to do it according to these three steps. I'm not quite sure how many of you guys heard of this uh, term called it a, um, I also want to guys type something. Have you do anything like a literature matrix? Have you heard of this uh, literature matrix? If you don't hear a literature, you don't hear any literature matrix, you can type two. Have you guys? No, okay, you haven't heard about literature matrix. How about the others? Okay. All right. So I see a number of you type type two, which means you don't really hear uh, somebody type three, three meaning that you hear or not hear. Um, okay, so literature matrix is a mechanism you can consider for preparing your literature. This is a way for you to understand all the source that you potentially will cite and quote. When you do this kind of literature matrix, you are doing a way to track your source. Maybe you are not really clear what I'm trying to tell you. When you try to do a research, we have to be exposed to a vast range of existing study. That's why we have to do a literature review. A literature review have a different purpose. Definitely, I will not explore the purpose and uh, and and functions of the literature, but you definitely need to write a literature review for any kind of research project at different stage for you to prepare research proposal for any students who yet produce your research proposal. You have to go through all of these process to collecting sufficient literature, which prove your own positions to do such study. So that's why we do a system to track the source. Literature matrix has certain templates. If you're interested after the session, um, you can take down all the notes and search from Google. Literature metrics have a different templates to follow. You can go to Google and search all of this. They may give you different templates to do this job. But in another way, when you do this um, literature matrix, you already form a list of literature. And it gives you a clear understanding of existing studies, particular methodology, key arguments, audiences the article addressed to, and also type of study and etc. approaches. So many things you can type in these metrics. And also you are able to get these sources for this to how to say to uh, to compose your own ideas. So when you do this, you are already make a very systematic organization of the potential source or the existing source. Secondly, I want to introduce you guys to do quotation by using the double quotation mark. This is a very vital. 
some of the time we do understand the APA citation. Now it's actually the version seven. Um, you have to carefully understand the rules of a citation. If you understand clearly about the rule of a citation, you will know where to put these indications of quotation. Some of the time we also want to express our own perceptions toward these statement or arguments by paragraphing. You also need to address the source at the end. I believe uh, I don't have any uh, slides to show how to do this. Um, it's not actually the purpose of doing this kind of a training, but you have to do this very carefully. I also want to ask you, maybe you can also speak if you wish to do. Let's say I use double uh, citation mark. What does that mean? If I mean, if I, I, if I talk about paragraph, what does this mean? Can anyone tell me your understanding about these two? What are the differences? If you wish to speak and turn the microphone on and we can speak to each other. Why we need to do paragraph and sometimes we do not do any paragraph uh, action. We just put it as a quotation. Okay, maybe let, let me just maybe give you some of the, I hear some, hear some voice. Oh no, okay, never mind. It's okay. For any kind of a quotations, if you follow um, the in-text citation format by using double citation mark sign, you have to indicate the page number. It's a way to acknowledge the original source of the idea. So people may have uh, exactly the same understandings as you putting the same way as the original author state. So we must acknowledge the page at the end of the sentence. So we usually see the author year and page number in specific. However, if we paragraph the sentence for the better logic connection in the context that you have built up, you also have to address to the particular author and its and his or her publication by putting author's surname and year. It's a way of a source indication, but paragraph may give you a sense of reorganize the sentences by fitting the ideas into your own contextual paragraph, which means you take the ideas from the existing source by fitting to the entire article, some of the sentence could not that natural or logical. So you have to paragraph it into the contextual paragraph that you're writing. And some of time people may use this way, some of the people may misread that doing paragraph become the possibilities to decrease plagiarism. It can be, but it cannot be as well. As we are unable to change the whole sentence by rephrase all the words, the system still will write, rectify the source. If you only paragraph a small portion of the sentence, the system still are able to identify this as a, call it a plagiarism. So be very carefully to do paragraph. And the third point is use the plagiarism checker. Uh, I indicate the page, which is a turn it in. And uh, this is some of the website I think majority of the universities and institutions use. Um, I'm not sure whether you guys have your own account. Um, you need to go through different process. For example, you have to key in your name, your article number, your article name, and also uploading your article. Wait for a few minutes and you are able to see the result of plagiarism. If you see your result is a more than 15 for any journal publication, I advise you to download the full report of plagiarism test. So you will know what actually is the problem lies. And that will become the way for you to improve. If let's say your articles turning test is below 15 or below 10, you still have to refer back to the author's guideline. So if the word limits, as what I mentioned just now, is ranging before, range between 8,000 to 10,000, so 15 could be acceptable, but depends on the journal's specific requirement. So you still have to check very carefully when you get this uh, plagiarism checker, work for your article. 
after your article has been uploaded and checked, you also need to understand, I, I'm not trying to give you guys a full instru instructions about how to set the plagiarism test. Some of the setting may also give you a very dramatic outcome or consequences if you do not set correctly. As the article was stored in the system, if your article has been stored in the system, it may bring very harmful consequence when you submit the journal to the, uh, if you submit your article to the other journal, which go through this uh, turning test, the result will be extremely high because they may consider you cite someone um, already published or someone has been uploaded to the system. So you have to make sure the setting is correct. This part is very technical. Maybe you can explore from different videos and also different uh, uh, users of this turning test system. Usually this system will not really give to students to operate. The lecturers or any administrative staff hold the hands to operate the system and do the setting. So you have to trust them anyhow. So the second step for you to do is understand the journal's aim and scope. Um, these are some of the things I initially as a PhD students will not really care about. Uh, we always look at oh, how is ranking because our university requires to submit the journals to Scopus journal or to the web of science journals. We try to look at the journals um, title, whether the title potentially embraces my, my topic. But the, the way to testify the, the, the journal, whether, whether the journal embraces your topic is check the MS scope. This will become very confident ground for you to, to seek possibilities for potential publication. If your publication write about PR, public relations, and you try to submit to some of the journal generally called it a um, communication and marketing. It may have rejections. However, it may depends on the uh, journals on scope. That's why we have to go to the website of the journal and check very carefully about the journals and scope. These are the different examples. I, I couldn't remember what's actually, uh, it's actually communication and sport. Um, I couldn't exactly remember which, uh, which publisher they publish. But this one uh, coming from El Seville and also uh, Amara and Sage. I think the last one is, one is a very typical Sage page. So Sage have this kind of a layout. I think this is from uh, Taylor and Francis. So I purposely select the journals from different publisher. They have a different styles. However, even though they are from different publisher, they have different style, but none of them will neglect the M and scope. They usually will place the journal description, journal metrics or about the journal very close to the journal, which means it's a very important information for any potential users, audiences, researchers to understand. As this is actually the place for you to see the matching point of your submission. So for instance, in this journal, sport communication and sport from the title itself, you already understand, oh, okay, this journal, uh, the one which accepting uh, the publications about communication and sport in general, this impression. but this journal may give you a very specific explanation in a second paragraph. They will tell you this journal exams both communication in sport and communication of sport. You can see these are the different, they purposely use italic to tell you the differences. By considering sport in light of a communication process, strategies, industries, access, and reception. These are the keywords for you to understand whether my publications could fit to any one of this. If you see it's difficult even for you to convince yourself your articles matches with these few areas, you don't need to consider this journal at all. Some of the journal like this one, they also tell what kind of articles would be welcome. They say they will come studies on sport and media in media and mass and the new media setting, research on sport in inter interpersonal group, organizational and other communication contexts, and analysis of sport rhetoric, discourses and narratives. Very clear and straightforward. So I encourage you guys to take this as important step two to understand the journal very carefully 
with that you're able to see possibilities to get your article be accepted the third part is very necessary and a little bit lengthy and uh, looks very simple we always about the originalities of the work as we understand the originality means that work is your own and not copied from other source or that your research ideas are fresh and add new knowledge to the field it looks very simple just three lines on these slides but it is not that easy for you to even to be confidently say this is my original work we as writer we always write articles produce different research projects by referring the existing study we also cite other people to support our own arguments we take second hand information to get any necessary um, evidence to justify my point of view so these are the way we always do but it sometimes can become a problem for us to position yourself as original this is something maybe make you guys look confused i'm the person who write the article i can clarify this is my original work and what's your own ground to challenge my originality of the work this may happen to many kind of uh, scenarios i can give you some of the review comments sample these are all the comments i received from the past years many years these are from different journal articles review process and you have to take it very ser seriously we can be very much more confident to claim this is my original work and every single journal do take it very seriously the first one is very positive re example the journal actually ask the reviewer to give an elevator pitch for the article the review say that this blah 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 are becoming less blah 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 is actually a very strong statement my article has. So that's the reason why it can be confirming that the reviewer have agreement. This journal is originally addressed this issue as comparing blah blah. These are the few words address originality. However, if you look at the other articles review process, they also very sincerely ask the reviewer. The first question they may ask you in this slide, they say, is this go accessible? Does the author has a distinct personal voice? The second part of this sentence is actually the key portions for me to talk about originality. You can see the review say that, yes, the article is accessible because this is some of the things um, that people can understand, people can easily to generate their own perceptions based on explanations, based on the theoretical frameworks. However, we may lose our own personal voice. In another way, originality's level or the novelties is not there. Every single submission needs has its own distinctive personal voice. If you try to repeat some other existing voices, it loses the value. In other words, it loses the sense of originality as your own personal voices is not loud enough. This is another way for you to see the reviewer's report. Another example is here. What question does this article provoke for you? Because something is confusing, because you want to know more, blah, blah, blah. You can see the reviewers are very critical. This article does not provoke any question for me as it needs more knowledge about the topic. It means, okay, they challenge you on the knowledge scope, but in another way, actually, they challenge you on the originality because you have the existing understanding on a given topic, but your question that you compose does not reach the level of originality or novelty. It failed to be addressed, even though it looks fine. The, the other type of questions is straightforward. Does this make a useful and original contribution to its field? So most of the time, especially for PhD students, when you go to this kind of uh, proposal defense, I believe the panels will always challenge you. How will you prove the research question, research objectivities are uh, original? How will you prove this is uh, the novelties you want to address throughout the article? They may have it, but for journals, they could be very rigid. So that's why you can see from this submission, I received comments saying, in a limited way, yes, it need to be more to be truly useful. 
these are some of the things they recognize half only. It is not fully recognized. You have your useful content or regional content, but it seems like not make me very inspired. So you can see that even though as people who are working on the research project, which already address the research gap clearly, we already mentioned these are some of the area other researchers not yet done. But when you develop your own thought, even though we went through all the things, they may still see less activate. So which means these are some of the areas for you to look at how to make it very clear and loud for the reviews and editors. These are the areas for you to reconsider. For example, how to make sure your own personal voices could be addressed clearly. They may say that this paper has a lot of discussions based on the existing study. It proves the author has a solid understandings on the topic and phenomenon, as well as a solid understandings of the theoretical framework. However, it needs some of the conceptual argument. This is a, my latest review report I received. So I have to find a way to construct my conceptual argument. The conceptual argument is very clear guidelines given by the review actually. They want you to give more personal voice. When you try to give more sense of conceptual argument, you are trying to speak more from your own thought, your own voices. This is a way to give more sense of your own discussion. And secondly, as this comment mentioned in a limited way, how to make it more instead of limited, you still have to look at the existing study. If you see the existing studies address these issues heavily enough, you should avoid this. If you, even though you find some of the hot topics, let's say COVID-19 nowadays, it's extremely popular and journals are very accommodating this kind of a publications, but journals may have their own standards. Because even though we have a bus of submissions addressing the COVID-19 from different sectors and different perspectives, but how are we differentiate this one from the others? So you still have to go back to the literature part. By doing literature metrics, I mentioned just now, introducing you to do the literature metrics as a way to identify the primary key arguments of that particular article. It will become a system. You can do it. It's, it's more like you are doing like a thematic analysis. If you're collecting all the interview script, you're doing thematic analysis, you understand all of this. It's a more like a similar process. You have to understand all these key points through all these kind of collections. This may differentiate your article from the others. So it makes your articles much more original instead of limited ways, yes. So this is some of the, um, can you guys understand what I'm trying to talk about? Do you guys have any difficulties to understand the point? Okay, so far? Are you okay with that? Are you able to follow? If you are able to follow, you can say yes. Yes, but can I ask the question now? It's sure, <laughs> sure, sure. I'm personally curious about the originality. So we can make our like yes. conceptual argument in the discussion part, right? Or, right? or we can do it in the like literature review part. I think both part needs this kind of a um, accent. Some of the journal, they even do not have a literature review. Um, if you try to browse some of our article publications, it may not have a literature review section. So what they do is to merge this inter, uh, literature review with introduction as a background. The background always serves a function to tell the necessary context. The context could be the existing study or the, the phenomenon you address or the relevant uh, national or regional issues that you want to speak about. So this part, you need to make sure your own voice is very clear. When you try to put others statement in the introduction, even though some of the journal may have accommodation for literature review, it doesn't mean the literature review should be a summative writing style. This is not correct. The journals wishes you 
to be the person evaluate, judge, elaborate, criticize, and also even assess the articles that you put into the literature section. Which means by doing these things, you have to make your own distinctive personal voice. In the process of a critic or in the process of elab elaborations, you are doing your own contributions accordingly. That's also the reason why it's also the section we wish to see your personal voice, even though in the introduction, literature review. We certainly understand for the discussion portion, we give all the points, we our, our own original thought in that particular section. That part is very heavily address the originality. So some of the authors may neglecting the way to write literature review and introduction. So these are the reasons. Actually, these are the tricks I, I do. Because if the reviewers see that I have a less distinct personal voice, I will try to impress you in the first few sections. In the first sections, let's say introduction, background, literature review, I try to give you a sense of my personal voice, which means I have vast exposures to this existing study. Nevertheless, I still have my own personal voice, which is differentiated from the existing study that bring the values of, uh, of the research. So this will be the important step for you to adopt. Certainly, when you have this kind of promising promise made in the beginning and also identify the research gap in the literature process, you have to make your promise to be fulfilled in the discussions and the findings or results. And there will be another heavy portions to prove these are clearly addressed. These are systematically discussed. When you try to do all of this, the originalities will be hardly to challenge. Yeah. So which means your personal voices cannot be reflected in the findings, results, and discussion sections. It could be earlier part of your article, even though the theoretical framework, literature review, and even methodology. The methodology part also could have a chance to give you on personal voice. Let's say usually this kind of a subject is a major in this approach. However, by doing such approach adopted the, from kind of a justification ground you did, then you do this kind of uh, explorations by using this methodology. So it also adding more personal voices as well. So you could see throughout the whole uh, writing of your article, it does give you various of chances to address your distinct personal voice. Did you get what I'm trying to tell you? Yes, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So far, how about the others? Uh, professor, may I have some questions? Yes. Uh, I believe a sure. uh, student might confuse about the contribution, implication, and articulation. Uh, besides, the discussion is very different from implication, right? Yes, you're right. Implications. I, I, you, yes, you go ahead. I yes, please. Add another a little bit. I have experience. Uh, in the tradi traditional way of writing the journal in Thailand, we put more emphasis on discussion, but now it's very different. Mm. Discussion can be at the introduction. We discuss about how, what, uh, why we have to write this paper. And then the implication and contribution is the main uh, significant to value our paper. Is that correct? I think you are right, because when we try to give a sense of value of such article, we usually place actually significance in earlier place instead of an ending or the conclusion. The same goes to implication. Um, I think some of the time when we as reviewer to judge the paper or as editor to see the potential for publications, we wish to see these few things firstly, and that's why um, Amra adopt this, this kind of abstract style that you have indicate the motivation of the study, the implication of the study. This also tells you that how important for you to place the implications and even significance in the first place. Indirectly, if you're trying to write your introductions or any earlier chapters or sections of a submission, you need to 
give the sense of implication. Implications could be industrial, practical, and political. So it can be any one of these, it could be all of this. So try to address all of these very carefully and also clearly, and we need to see the logic connections. Okay, some people may say very promising implication in the very beginning, very promising. However, when we see the discussion portions, it doesn't have any uh, echo and correlations between the argument and also the implication. Somebody may say, I review some of articles also lately. They say it's very useful for the policy maker. That's it. What is actually the policy maker? In what sense? What are they? In which region? To what kind of levels? Can, what, can this bring any impact? How to measure the impact? And what would be the accurate executions of the so-called policy making can take place? It's unclear. So we can make things very promising by stating clearly in the beginning, but eventually we still need to judge as review and an editor. So we, if we do not see this, it doesn't serve any purpose of placing all these in the early sections of the submission. So this is actually the trend now. Um, I think even writing, uh, not only maybe, maybe in time, uh, I'm writing for the, some of the Chinese top ranking journals. I also need to position my articles in the very promising in the very first, but I also need to give a sense of my exposure to the literature, which means I do not simply give justifications. I have to get some ground to give such justifications. So always refer to some of the, um, the representative or that's where, uh, the reason if you try to build up the literature metrics, um, I encourage every single PhD students to identify the key scholars in this particular field. You have to track all the publications by these uh, few select uh, few scholars. This is very important. When you try to understand the, the so-called the track of publication of this scholar, you will understand how these ideas is developed. And you will understand how these authors are influencing the others to construct their own ideas accordingly. If you're able to identify this kind of a scholars or any authors, it will be very helpful. By doing this kind of things, if you bombard the reviewers with this kind of exposures, it will be very good, which means I have very solid ground to make these kind of values and implications. It doesn't mean I don't have any ground to make implications very sound and clear. And of course, you also need to make a promise to be fulfilled in the discussion and fighting sections. You can even mention certain ways in your introductions or when you try to express the implication and significances and lead the readers or viewers to that portions. It means you have a strong confidence to let them to read this part, which are interconnected. This is actually the writing style I also wish you guys to use for project writing, which means I have a, this kind of a, uh, implications or significance in the earlier sections. But how will you address this? You can also put in that in the particular chapter, this can be blah, 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 blah. So this is a way for people like us to judge. Although I have not yet reached that stage or reached that chapter, but I understand you have this core in the connection sense. This is also very vital. This is all about the smart writing techniques. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other question? Because I think the third part is also the very difficult part. That's why I purposely to choose four uh, review reports, different styles, but they may have a different ways to challenge the originalities. And the novelties is some of the things that we always highlighted in any kind of research projects. And uh, that's also the reason I introduced you to do the literature metrics. Later, you will know how valuable to do this. Okay, so let's move on. If you have questions, you can also definitely stop me for a while. And this is also relevant to the literature view, actually. Um, we, when we try to make a very good research, we always have a very wonderful motivations. As a reviewer, we always see the values of motivations a lot. But I also have some conversations with postgraduate students from other universities. Um, I remember one of them also talked about his or her own findings about some of the phenomenon in the market itself, but it's actually lack of academic sense. So for instance, we do have our own working experience in the industry. We see as a problem, 
or even we see as a phenomenon, we even don't see as a problem. We just see interesting. Somebody may treat the interesting phenomenon as a motivation. I'm not encouraged to do it. So if you find some of the things interesting, it does have its maybe um, reasons to be existed. So you try to dig further can be some of the things you can address and discuss, certainly can. But you also have to get some of the ground to justify whether this phenomenon deserve a academic study or any kind of a systematic measures or any form of empirical explorations. So all the questions you have to be carefully addressed. If you just see this as an interesting phenomenon and you lack of any kind of foundation as what I described, you won't be possible you to sell the boat together with your supervisor. I could see it will be very difficult for you to make your even objective or hypothesis for either qualitative or quantitative study. This is the reason why go back to the literature. This is the reason why I purposely highlight the li literature once again. We may, we may witness various of interesting motivations around you because we are human beings, study communication and media. We witness this kind of industrial phenomenon. We witness this kind of scenarios in the audience sectors. We witness this kind of a trend, but how will we make it as academic study? It needs a scientific method to measure and explore. So this is the reason why you need to be carefully and through when you build up this kind of a hypothesis or research objective. Maybe the literature is the only source for you to confirm the way to develop such study. So this is the reason why literature always plays as a very important foundation for you to move further. This is a very common mistake we also made as well. I also want to show you guys a review report about this part. Structure and the lack of focus is a major of in this essay. They are the statement made about no elucidation and a close analysis of the film. The author rely on a lot of a quoting the work of others and his or her own voice is a barrier under the deluge of the existing literature. When it seems as if the author is about to make original point, she or he undercuts himself by quoting someone else. This is also relevant to the third point about originality. But this is also the reason why if you try to look at the work that has been done by the others, it becomes the very possible um, ways for you to do similar research objective. As I supervise more and more students who study Marvel's film, a lot of the students are interested to explore black or the female superheroes. But if you try to look at these two, either on looking at the race or the gender perspective, they have been heavily discussed. They may already been existed for a quite some time. So it's very challenging for students to come up with a new statement or even a new objective. As you always focus on the race depicted in the Marvels series, Marvels has a limited collections. You always have these limited numbers of films. You may talk about the black pattern. You always talk about the black pattern, how they depict the African American, how they depict the black. They are vast of the studies. If you always focus on how these address, uh, how the uh, what's up, maybe my should always. Uh, I want to discuss the representation of the black in uh, Marvels. But my question is, how will you position your study from the existing study? It's unclear. So this is unacceptable. The same goes to the genders. Okay, the female super superwoman. Maybe you are using the different um, feminist theory, but there are also others who use same same theory to explore. It means it's a repeated. You're quoting from the others. So you try to avoid this kind of a statement of research goal and objective. Then this is a, some of the mistake we always do. Um, I do have uh, some of the part for you to explore together. Um, I'm not sure whether I can share these files here. Let me try to share whether I can share files. 
it's about a website. I want you guys to look at the uh, abstract first, and then we can discuss. Maybe I can try to open the article. You can see it. You guys can see the article from the screen, right? Okay. Um, I do not have any favor on this article, but I just found it's a very um, useful example. Uh, I have no any personal judgment on this article. It's purely based on um, the intentions of sharing and I'll let you guys understand how to make your own voices clearly and also different from the others. Nowadays, many students are also interested to explore the representation of a culture related areas on the website. So it can be numbers of possible studies can do. Uh, lately, actually, I also published one. Um, I look at the uh, coffee because it's actually requested by one of my Indonesian friends who asked me to join the research ground together to write articles for this research ground. Um, I'm, my research area is actually nothing to do with the website and also coffee and etc. But um, it's purely based on the um, the interest of the research ground that we are working together. So I also explore the website. I, that's why I discover there are so many existing studies about the culture perspective or culture elements and their representations on the website. And this is one of them. And I believe in Thailand, you also may have a similar study how Thai Airways is representing itself on the website, how the corporate communication is down, and how they manage any kind of, uh, uh, let's say, the crisis. Um, if the, let's say, the COVID 19 Thai Airways take these kind of services to the ground. So these are the things they are doing, and people may take it as a research as well, and they may look at the representation of these particular subjects. And this is a, one of the research which look at one location uh, to reason. And uh, this is uh, the research methodology clearly uh, stated in the, in, the in the title. And these some of the things maybe I can extend a little bit. This title is very clear. Um, it tells you what is actually the tomb of writing. If you understand the Stockholm's uh, culture theory, they may use a lot of representation of the culture, blah, blah, culture, blah, blah. So adopt this kind of a sense of a writing uh, title. Secondly, the methodology itself is very clear, is CDA, Critical Discourse Analysis. The research, research subject is obviously uh, clear. There is a web, two reason websites. The plural indicate it examining several websites. The title itself is very clear and straightforward. I also want you guys to read through this abstract. How will you see this article differentiate from the others by looking at the purpose? You, I can give you a few, few minutes to read this part. Have you finished reading? Oh, okay. Somebody said finish reading. Uh, maybe I can ask this talk. How do you read these articles objective? which is over here. 
you can just personally um, express your own thought. It's fine. How do you see this uh, purpose of the study? Any PhD volunteer students want to speak? Uh, since just now I see some of the participants reply yet. Can I have okay. a um, one start call? <laughs> uh, yep. I'm going to say something, but I I forget to turn on my telephone. Okay, I mean, uh, yeah, sure. The purpose is imply something as a result. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. You're right. Yeah, it implies some of the possible result this article will address, as it says, um, identify with the. If this study also investigate how so these are the few keywords um, these may indicate the results yeah you're right how about the others maybe i can ask you further how will you see the originality of the article this part Actually, this actually is the this part for me make more sense to position its value because they say that my, my, this is actually kind of a findings. This is a kind of a findings for people to understand what this article will primarily contribute as it actually give you uh, elements of the findings and the sense of the findings. And they also try to build up these correlations carefully. All right, so this is some of the articles um, I wish to share you all. But of course, if you're interested to read article, you can search this. And this article did a very good job of a data collection. Um, and they use NVivo to analyze all the website. And it demonstrates some of the good sense of the data organizations. And these are some of the things I may not touch um, here today. So let's continue. Uh, excuse me, Professor. May, may I sure. have a question for uh, the article you share on the screen? Uh, sure. I am look at the the keyword. Uh, what, what, uh, what is the best keyword? Uh, for example, on the screen, uh, if we are look at the the article names and the mm. keyword, sometimes is not uh, related. Mm. Uh, and what is the best keyword we are? Uh, we we are presents or suggest in in mm. the, uh, the, uh, the article mm -hmm. this is this question um to be honest i actually uh helping some others to do trainings on uh, writing research proposal for some of the postgraduate students so they also need to compose the keywords by submitting when they're submitting the research proposal um i try to look at these a different perspective let's say looking at the research title you put up point out some of the key keywords may have less relations with the key with the title, but some of them may be well reflect in the title itself. It purely depends on how the article will address in its findings and also uh, discussion sections. So if this article has very clearly tell you about the research subjects, what is the main subject this article will discuss? For this case is Cyprus. So they talk about Cyprus, they will definitely place this research subject as the keywords. But secondly, this article wishes to highlight its methodology very clearly in article title. For example, in the article title, it does not tell this article exam the case in Cyprus. It's not there. But in the article itself, we understand the topic uh, not reflecting Cyprus, but is only focusing Cyprus. That's why in the keyword itself, you need to give a reader a good sense of the context you are focused on. If focus on one single subject, it's better for you to address in the first place. So it may avoid any kind of a confusion. So for this case, this is a good job. They did Cyprus 
as the first keywords. And secondly, in the title itself, you can see the methodology has been placed as subheading critical discourse analysis. So it tells what kind of a method, what kind of a scientific measures I'm going to use. So the methodology come at the second. Actually, for this methodology, it can come later or any part, but this is actually reflecting in the title itself. It needs it deserves an earlier place in the keyword portion. So sec thirdly, they put cultural tourism. Because these are some of the theoretical or conceptual foundations for this develop for this study to develop further. That's why it needs to give up space for cultural tourism. These are the tools, which is a level and what are the source of information web content. These are the things this website, oh, sorry, this abstract trying to employ for doing a keywords writing. So remember some of the principles. You need to give a readers a sense of research subject. Let's say you focus on uh, some of the particular media in Thailand. Let's say you're looking at the streaming media. What is actually the specific streaming media you're looking at? You can name it them. You can just name it. If you're looking at a general pictures of streaming media in Thailand, you can put in streaming media at your first place. But we understand you're looking at Thailand as your contact as your geographic context. You can also place Thailand as your keywords. What would be the method for you to do major and a discussion? So you need to brief us the particular method and approach. And sec thirdly, what are the conceptual or the theoretical foundations for you to develop? You even can put the relevant theoretical and conceptual keywords over there. And lastly, you can consider some other supplementary information you need to inform the readers. So these are the basic import, important uh, areas for you to do a keywords writing. Yeah. Thank you, Kap. Yeah. Do you? Do you write your keywords for your paper already? Did you write your um, own keywords for your article? Have you? Yes, we have. I think you have. Do you use similar ways to write your keywords or you're using different ways to write your keywords? Uh, for around, uh, right now, I try to practice from the, the article names, but uh, for, for, uh, for today, very, very useful for me, uh, as for your suggest, uh, try, to, uh, try to look at the, the conceptual, uh, conceptual or methodology, or maybe uh, from, the, from, from all, the, all of the, the article and look at the, the best keyword to put on the keyword in the article. Yeah, you still have to go back to some of the basic structures that you are uh, you're writing on. Then you are able to identify the, the keywords for readers to understand clearly. But you can see from these examples, they really adopt the ideas from the title. It has some of the uh, coherence. And this is actually the very important ways for us to write uh, keywords. All right, so hopefully it's useful for you. This is some of the extra and thanks for the questions. And these are the few areas for us to look at it how many how many hours or how many minutes i have i'm not sure now it's almost um three okay so let's continue and we also have to try to uh, i think this is already mentioned incomplete article we have to try to avoid if you try to submit articles to any journals you have to ensure its completions and uh, this is some of the things um maybe i may not discuss heavily over here but there are some of the part I want to emphasize on is this view here. Avoid flows in procedure, presentation, and analysis of the data. Because an article serves a function to inform the readers with your findings. When we try to inform readers about your findings and discussions, it needs to give a sense of a procedures how you achieve this, how you collect the data, and how you move from one location to another, and how you make this research become possible, and how you do this. So the procedure of the data explanations should be there. And the way to present all of these data is also very important. I believe 
your lecturers may also give you different trainings on that. Even for writing an article for journal publications, it has the same principle. When we try to give a sense of a structure of writing research project, chapter one is chapter, uh, chapter one is introduction, chapter two, literature review, chapter three, methodology, chapter four is your findings, chapter findings or maybe a results, chapter five is your discussions. So it actually have a sense of a structure. The same goes to your article for journal publication. It needs to give a sense of procedures. The procedures are primarily not only on the quantitative data collection, but also applicable to qualitative data. Most of the time when people focus on qualitative data analysis, we may neglect the importance of informing procedures of data collection. I understand we have a different ways of collecting data from qualitative, but it needs a sense of procedure as well. This is part I wish to highlight because for quantitative, I may not have any necessities to extend my discussions. Okay, for quantitative, you need to get the variables, independent variables, and then you have to use um, the, how the sample unit you have to blah, blah, blah. So these are very clear procedures, but for qualitative, it also needs a sense of the procedures. What is a sample unit, sample size, and such a, it's also necessary for you to explain. And how will you present this in this article? It is a skillful job. Definitely when you try to give your full understandings on the data itself, the part of analysis will be the best window for people to understand. You also need to look at the validations. Validations can be also applicable for both. For some of qualitative, we, we were neglecting this part as well. But when you, do, when you do discussions, you need also try to find a supportive ground for, for, for this particular point or arguments. This is the process for you to do. If you try to neglect the validations, your ground of justification is so weak to be challenged. People may have a simply to make a conclusion. This is an article lack of validations, which means it does not have the values and implications that you made in the beginning. And definitely lastly, it's all about the argument and conclusion. I may not extend too much because it's a very heavy portion for us to understand about arguments writing, conclusion writing, it's not about this. But today I'm here to try to give you guys some of the other information that you need to be aware of as a writer who are interested to pursuing publications in your life career. OICID ID. Do you guys have an OICID ID? If you do type one, if you have it, type two. I want to see how many have this um, ORCID ID. Many have ID. Many of you don't have it. Is it your first time to hear this ORCID ID? If you Hear okay ID for the first time. You can take type one. If you hear this before, you can type two. Okay. Someone type one. Okay. I'm ask someone who type one. Um, maybe uh. Maybe pair, can you turn your microphone on? You can speak. Is that okay for you? Hello, can I type? Hello. Hello, yeah. yeah. Um, what do you see the value of uh, OK ID? What is actually the OK ID all about? Oh, sorry, I just first this OK ID first time. Okay. First time, first time you hear the yeah. OK of ID. Yeah. Okay, can you uh, can you assume why we need a kind of ID? What's ID? Maybe you don't have any pictures without I explain it to you. Can you just give a guess? What's the OK ID means for a publication? Mm -hmm. You can just give a guess. Since it has a word ID over there. I can't guess. 
you, you can't guess, right? Okay. Yeah. Maybe I can maybe I can ask someone who, who know about can you, it. Can you show? Can you show a bit? You can key in the website. For those who haven't um heard about OPID, you can go to the website. Uh, it's actually over here. You can type orcid.org. Okay. Yeah. Is it something that identified the list list or show ID? List of of uh, what kind of ID you mentioned? I think this is some of the part I uh, wish everyone to start to register yourself at this moment. Even though you do not have any publications, even though you are uh, just start to do any research projects, I still wish and encourage you guys to register yourself for Oki ID. Why it is important? Okay, yeah, somebody may show the examples. Yeah, somebody already gave me the examples. Uh, they use a social professor Janima's uh, examples. Many of very reputed scholars, they have these few IDs. You can see here in the chat box, Oki ID and Scopus author ID. Oki ID is some of the things I wish you guys to really consider because how to come close this one? I don't know how to come. Okay, this is a way. Can you guys see this uh, full screen from uh, from from called the trusted organization? Can you see this a uh, screenshot? Can right? Okay, I just tell you this is uh, from my own Oki ID um, website. There are a few areas I highlight. I will purposely let, uh, highlight them. Can you see the circles I highlight? El Severe Editorial. Taylor's and Francis, Taylor's and Francis, also here, Scholar One, Sage Publish, Scoper, all of this is actually reputed publisher. Else, you can see from the beginning, from the top to the bottom, I just screening a part of my uh, own record. This is a part of my uh, back side I can see from my website, Oki ID. It indicates that who are the people reviewing my Oki ID. You will know who are these people looking at your Oki ID at what time. So you can see in the early time, 2013, uh, I registered myself quite earlier. So Elsevier start to review my information and read my information with the visibilities and trustee parties because Oki ID are authorized and they can check through all this information. These are the site to display your own particulars. Your particulars, not only about your biography, your education, your um, industry experience, your membership, and your um, kind of a working experience, publication is actually the most important part for these publishers to check. And that's also the purpose for them to check. If you try to understand this backside image, you will understand how important for an author to have their own Oki ID. It will become the site for the reputed publishers to understand your record of publication. They will understand how this author takes care of his or her own publication. It may tell them uh, how to read them as the owner of the article. Maybe you, you already signed the copyright transfer uh, to the relevant and respect journals, but you still definitely are able to publish the titles in this kind of a website. So they will know this kind of a site may potentially attract attentions for citation, for sharing, for what kind of occasions. So this is the reason why Oki ID may give a re maybe a publishers a chance to understand you. And definitely when you have an Oki ID, it will become a place for you to be recognized among the peers who are doing study in the global scale. In most of the journal like this, it measures displayed. Uh, this is a journal called the International Journal for Strategic Communication. And this is a, from Taylor San Francis. This is a, the icon of the Oki ID next to the email address, which means whoever look at this article, 
may potentially click this button and look at your profiles. And it may give an, an, a reader, viewers, a readers a chance to look at your publication track and your educational qualifications and others you wish to be announced. However, it doesn't mean the people who do not have Oki ID does not deserve chance for publication. The same journal in 2021, this year, International Journal of Strategic Communication, they also publish authors who do not have Oki ID. So this is not the ground for people to justify whether you deserve better chance for publication or you don't deserve it. But it's actually a credit that you give to yourself that I have this kind of a system for me to organize my publication record. This is some of the things I wish you guys to start to doing this kind of record at the very early stage. Definitely, uh, I think from the chat box, you already see that um, this is a Scopus author ID. And uh, I also wish to introduce you guys to Web for Science Researcher ID. If you publish any articles by Scopus and or Web for Science, you will have your own ID, which is also connected with your OK ID. If you try to go to Scopus, let me just try to show you guys how to do this. Let me try to show you the uh, Scopus. Can you see my uh, browser? You, see, you can see it, right? It takes some time, my internet connection is not good. Okay, so let's say there are a few ways for you to understand the journal, whether they are in the Scopus. If you're interested to understand the journal, go to here, view journal ranking or go to source. You just click this one and go to the areas. You can type title or the publisher or even ISSN to check the journal. Uh, I may not intend to introduce here, but this is extra sharing. You can search journal whether they're indexed in, in Scopus. But there will be another portion for you guys to check the authors. Let me just try to use my own information as example. My H index is not high as my field of study is very rare. It's a film study, it's a very small number of people doing research. So my citation is not that good. So this site will indicate the number of articles they have already recognized by Scopus. And they also indicate how many people already cite your article accordingly. But my, 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 my main point is here. If anybody who have a Scopus publication, they will link to your ORCID ID. These are the two sites linked. If you do not have any ORCID ID, Scopus may look lack of one of information about yourself. So definitely I do understand you wish to publish your own articles at least by Scopus. So that's why I encourage you guys to at least to start your ORCID ID first. When you try to submit article, some of the submission system will require you to key in your OK ID. It happened to my latest publications. They require you to key in your own OK ID. So when you key in the OK ID, the publisher will connect your OK ID to the article in specific, which means they already have one of the technical mechanisms to connect yourself with article that you publish. It becomes the ID card in your hand. The ID card will be consistently used for different platforms. That gives you a chance to be connected in these few platforms. The same goes to the Web of Science Research ID. Um, how many of the lecturers have this uh, research ID? Web of Science Research ID? Maybe um, if you have it, maybe you understand what I'm trying to tell you. To do this information, I also introduced another site, which is Pubhub. Have you heard of this site before? If you hear about Pubhub before, you can type one. If you haven't heard any about Pubhub, you can type one. How many guys hear about this site? Have you heard about Pubhub? If you hear about it, you can type one. Okay, somebody type one. 
wonderful have one people reply if you don't have chance to hear about it this is the website go to the site um, you can type i think you have a computer with you you can just type this p u b l o n s and this is the website then you can log in so i've already have my own account so you you need to register yourself then you are able to only log into this system For this site, I do not use my university's email because in one day, if let's say I change my affiliations from one to another, so it's not really recommended to use your affiliations email. I use my own personal email for this site. So for this site, it actually indicates several informations. It primarily serves several uh, purposes, uh, but the popular ones including how you actively review article. As a reviewer, if we review article recognized by the system, like what I displayed just now, uh, I can show you the slides once again. Uh, da, 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 da. If you look at this slide, can you see Scholar 1 manuscript? Can any, because it's not full screen. Can you guys see? scholar one manuscript can you see this right you, you can see this this is actually the system problem recognize and that's why they also can myself with my OK id because if you submit your article to the journal which use scholar one system problem will also connect it reviewers if you review one article which using scholar one uh, system it will count you in the system. Each year, they will also give awards to the reviewers in the global wide. Who review more articles will be the ranking of top reviewers. In different regions, they will give recognitions to the top reviewers. Unfortunately, I'm not the one. So in different countries, they may also have different rankings. Publon is a site. If you do not have any Publon account, even though you help to review articles, you don't have any record. So if you wish to have any record by the system, it's better for you to register Publom. And this site, the other function for you to understand is to connect with the Web of Science. You can see here, Community Web of Science. This is the website. To, uh, we also wish to publish articles with the two index. One is a Scopus and the other one is Web of Science. If you wish to have a Web of Science ID, you need to at least publish article and journal articles by the journal which are listed in the Web of Science. You're only able to get your Web of Science researcher ID. And these are the few IDs you are encouraged to obtain at the first. This will be very benefit for your careers. All right, so these are all about IDs. There are also other platforms I may not discuss too many, otherwise you are so busy with the register yourself at this moment. There are definitely a few other sites you are encouraged to explore, uh, including Mendeley and etc. But also some other items you need to very carefully check through on top of these kind of IDs, because usually the website may request you to key in these IDs. If you have it, it's fine to leave it empty if you don't have it. But definitely if you have it, it will give a chance for the reviewers to go to the site like this one displayed because I, I key in more my OK ID to these publishers. So they will check my record. The, this is a, the windows for me to understand. Oh, okay, I submit my article to this journal. They start to check my profiles. So this become an indication for you to understand the flow of edit, uh, editor report. Secondly, you need to understand different journals may have a different, for, uh, different file requirement. You need to understand the guidelines for author. Then you will understand what are the documents you need to prepare in advance. Most of the journals, they require the manuscript without any author information. But at the same time, you still need to submit the manuscript with author details. Separately, you also need to produce author biograph. You also trying to find the keywords. This is actually another part, uh, thanks to the gentleman's question. Keywords not really usually 
uh, become the submissions together with article. And they may give you another chance to key in the keywords. Cover letter will be the, the, the particular specific letters for you to address the originalities or the author interest conflict, etc. Usually it's about the human interest. For example, if you are having several authors, do you have any conflicts among the author's team? Or if you're doing survey, how will you clarify the aesthetic practice? So aesthetic considerations, etc. Tables and figures sometimes are requested to, uh, to be uploaded separately. So you need to understand all the files requirement according to journal standards. Lastly, as what I mentioned, the declarations of interest statement, finding funding statement. These are the all individual segments for any publication submission. So you need to prepare in advance. If you open the system, then you only start to realize this. It may take you some time to, uh, to edit them accordingly. My advice to all of you is to get understand clearly for every single journal, what are the required documents in what kind of a format and how will they be uh, key into the system, including the keywords, you need to understand clearly. At least you go first for one round for one publisher, you will understand the procedures clearly. The same goes to the finding statement. Funding statement is also another individual segment. You need to key in carefully with the funding grant numbers or any grant names you have to key in. Some of the, um, the grant are very universal. The system will generate the grant name um, for you uh, automatically. But if the grant is only at the internal grant, you have to key in the grant um, one by one. So it also accepted. The word count is also another part that you have to fill in. So which means you need to use the word files to count the words and the system will definitely rec recognize and rectify the word count. That's also a, a reference for editors to understand whether this article uh, fulfill our requirements for further review process. Let's say our article require our work counts limits is 8,000. However, you write uh, more than 12,000 words. So I may not advise for any review process. The first thing I will do by looking at work count, I would definitely either test rejection or tell you to sh shorten the article. These are the ways for people to look at these few informations from the end as editor and reviewer. And certainly these are the so-called uh, tips, extra tips for you to understand that you can prepare for publications. All right, so I think I can um, discuss a little bit here um, as I understand some of uh, the lecturers um, for your information, um, your professors has been invited to be the plenary speaker for the conference that I'm going to chair in the upcoming November, which will be held virtually. We initially wished to organize this conference physically in the campus. Unfortunately, thanks to the pandemic COVID-19 in Malaysia, the confirmed case in each day make a new records. So in the latest of five or four days is a more than uh, 17,000 confirmed case. And we have a more than three digit people pass away every day. Uh, with that, the immigration still not lose its ground to any foreign visitors. So we cannot open the conference to any visitors and our campus is also closed. Our campus closed uh, since February of 2020 now it still remain closed. We are still working from home and we have to organize the conference on time, certainly. With that, we have to organize this conference virtually with the theme, the power of change, reshaping the landscape of media and communication. As the chair of the conference, I have a four keynote speakers and two plenary speakers, and we have a different nationalities speakers to share the insight to definitely in, um, empower of our academic discussions on this particular theme by addressing our concerns on the changing landscape of media and communication domestically and internationally. If you're interested to participate in this conference, um, I can also give you an offer. If you get your paper accepted, you can also mention my name. Uh, I am recommended by Dr. Wang Changsung um, to enjoy the scholarship between 30 to 40 percent. So now we also, I have this kind of a, a, a so-called privilege given by the organizers. They, they tell me, Dr. Wang, if you have any good networks, internally you can share the scholarship, which means 
you uh, you can be entitled with a certain discount and we do we do not call it a uh, discount we call it a scholarship so they, they will give you an individual scholarship if your accept paper is accepted and they also recognize this is dr wang's recommendation so you will be given uh, the range between 30 to, to 40 percent scholarship and the the topics of this conference varies from a lot of areas underneath media and communication studies and you can go to the website, the media, the media science.com. And this is the website you can get for more information. And certainly this website um, is uh, well supported by seven um, journals. And these seven journals are all Scopus and ISI index journals. And uh, the competition is very overwhelming certainly because each journal can only accommodate very small number of, of publication. So, with that, we have to understand the publication process. Your article need to be accepted for the abstract and the full payment must be done and you present the paper at the conference. The due date for the full paper submission will be informed accordingly. So we will inform the date for full paper submission. The full paper submission will go through screening process and the journals will take the process individually and they will take the good ones, because we as organizer, we don't have uh, this uh, power to influence, but we can make the full paper recommendations to the journals. So they will select the journals for publication and they will reply for the necessary changes and amendment. But these journals are very different from each other. So if you're interested, you have to go through the publication 2021, this site here. You can check all these uh, um, collaborated journals and look at the MS scope. If your research topic areas matches with the MS scope of the respect journal, you can try to specifically mention the journal in the full paper submission. You can also address what kind of uh, uh, so-called the journals you're adding to publications. So you can address to this. This will be the way for us to, to consider for the ISI and the Scopus publications by the conference participants. And lastly, um, before I end it, for those people who wish to keep communicating with me, uh, you are more than welcome to follow my Instagram and also Facebook. If you are interested, you can search my uh, English name Chanson dot Wang at Instagram or my Chinese name Chang Song Wang at Facebook. So you can keep connecting with us. Academics have a, this kind of a very healthy and constructive environment in which we are enjoying exchange ideas by using social media platforms. Um, like this event, I published my post by these two platforms. I think this is some of the good ways for us to keep to be keep connected. And in this kind of uh, challenging circumstance, we are still trying to make our self become more fruitful and productive scholar. With that, uh, I thank you very much for um, giving my time to sharing my observations and experiences for publication writing and certainly i will open my ground for q a and also interactions with every one of you yes thank you dr wang this is the lecture is very interesting and eye-opening for several yes and uh, you gave uh, some secret Yes, that, it's a secret. Uh, <laughs> yes, that is the secret. Uh, like, uh, why do we have to register for ORCID ID for, for Scopus? Of course, you need to publish uh, in a Scopus uh, uh, journal first. So right. before getting the, the Scopus ID, and it is very encouraging and it's very timely not for the PhD student, also for the uh, faculties, because uh, as in the university, as we are in the university, it's our mission to publish the papers, uh, to uh, what, to enlarge the the knowledge, and otherwise we cannot compete with others. And uh, several things that you mentioned, it remind me, yeah, like uh, why do we have to uh, 
to give information about funding statement about word count. Yes, really, uh, we just overlook this kind of information. As an editor of Cisco Bus Journal, I can say, I can tell you why do we, uh, uh, why we are interested in funding statement. This is for the, the, the journal, because our journal reputation is count on the funding. If you publish the paper that uh, has funding, it's add to the score of our reputation. That uh, when we have to decide to publish the paper, if there are two paper, one has a funding statement, uh, fund, uh, get funding, and the other did not. If we have to decide, we will pick up uh, the article that get the funding. Because oh, right. yeah, yeah, that 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 is the uh, nobody knows if you are. This not a secret. Reading. This a secret. <laughs> yeah, yes, because as a who are responsible for, for the journal. Once you are in the Scopus uh, status, you have to keep up. Otherwise, your status will be recalled. Correct. And once you are at Q4, you have to make your journal Q3, Q2, and Q1. So that is the job of the uh, journal team, yes. So once uh, you guys all know the secret and the word cow, why do we have to be cautious with the word cow? It means uh, it's money, the fee. Yes. Money, you have yeah. certain, page fees. Page fee. You have certain uh, yeah. uh, chart for page. And for additional, uh, they are serious. If you are, if your paper, the word beyond the uh, slot, they will charge you. Mm -hmm. Like uh, our journal charge every five hundred for fifty dollars, and the others that we are submitting charge at uh, every page one hundred and ten euros. So if you are lazy to to reduce the number of the pages, you have to pay. You have to pay. <laughs> but the, the, the secret of the, the, the number of the page is uh, we believe that if you are a good scholar, you can express yourself in short sentence. So that's why many um, journals, several journals, I think most of the journals do limit the number of word count. Mm -hmm. So that is very, yes, very eye-opening for the other that uh, I overlook when I, I share things with uh, my student or my colleagues. I, I did not tell this kind of thing, really. Yeah, so, it's, a, it's kind of a hidden agenda we usually practice as editors and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that, that is our practice. And then uh, I never share. <laughs> but I, I, I can share, but I, I never think that this is important once I hear, oh, this is the, the, really the secret. If we know the secret, we can go beyond and go uh, ahead of the others. Because it's just not just your ability to write, but the secret of writing is very important. Yes. Yeah. So open the floor to others. Thank you Prue, for adding these valuable points. I didn't extend to that level because I think it's a more like a hidden agenda. We are unreal, but anyhow, from this a very um, linear way, I could share these other, maybe the ways you can do for improve more chances, get publication. But I'm glad that you guys have also given me a very good responses from time to time. Although I asked you guys just type one and two, so at least I know how I can make progress accordingly. And Someone just, asked, just yeah. extend uh, the date of the submission <laughs> to your, <laughs> because uh, we my extended student... to, we extended we extended a uh, second round to the uh, to the twentieth August, so we may consider for uh, the third round extensions. So anyhow, you can just try to submit 
um, based on the second round of extension. Because uh, all of my students, they are up to the north, the <laughs> done of work. So uh, we will try our best to, to submit. Is that your we... semester ongoing at this moment? Mm, all of my students just finished the uh, proposal defense. And now they are uh, they are revising, and then they have to resubmit, so we can uh, pass the the progress grade. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's great. But more or less, they have some material to to write some, something. Yeah, at least the plenary uh, primary findings need something. Otherwise, the fighting part would be empty, because it's a proposal stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. uh, Dr. Sutanipa, you have something? Yes, please. <laughs> no, no, nothing. It's very good session today. So thank you very much for the beginning. I'm sure that many, many students, including me, is did this stage is the beginning stage for us. And then, you know, the good beginning will be the great future. I can say that. So very, very thank you. And maybe next time or any other occasion, we will meet again. Sure, and of course. Invite maybe we invite you to like consult uh, our students about the papers, about publishing, or even a uh, research methodology or something. So thank you so much for this. You are most welcome. If you need my help as uh, maybe a panel for review, um, I'm okay with that. And definitely depends on your management decision because I'm the international um, academicians. So it won't be maybe easy for maybe physical visitations, but virtually I could be here to support any kind of assessment because I'm doing for other universities as well for PhD. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, I think, yeah, I think for this beginning level, we need a good motivations. If we are motivated, but we don't know how to start, it can become so problematic. So that's why I think we need to give a certain grounds of a guideline. And that's where I come in. So if anyone of you guys start to get motivations to write and produce with this kind of a guideline, at least you'll know how to start to write. Anything start from doing. So if we're able to do something in the right track, you were better to produce something which that you desire to achieve. This actually is the purpose of the training. I hope it will be helpful for all of the young scholars. Thank you. Anyone want to add something? And uh, let me ask. I, I want sure. to. Uh, <laughs> I need your secret. How can you write uh, at this young age? How can you write so many papers? Um, can, can you be... just give the uh, just give uh, my student and others uh, a secret because they are young and then one day I hope that they can be at uh, the same as yours. Maybe I can tell you how old I am. Uh, I'm all, I'm forty years old. <laughs> I'm not that young, <laughs> but anyhow, um, I have been in these kind of positions for many years, and I do have my own motivations. I have uh, different goals. Um, which can be understood as five years ago, three years ago, one year ago. And I have a one system, which because I'm the department head, so I'm the person who developed the management system, which can encourage more colleagues to generate more paper. So I always table all the results every single semester. We have a three semesters in a year. So I have my secretaries to display all the research um, publications, all the record. I recognize the university rec recognize univ uh, universities in Malaysia system recognize I list on all of this. In the very beginning, all the names are mine from the top to the to the bottom. You can see only my names appear because Xiamen University Malaysia is a very young university. Xiamen University in mainland China has a 100 years history and we celebrate 100 year anniversary this year. But for Malaysia campus, only five years old. So we have a very much um, great number of young scholars who lack of a motivations to start right. Then I start to do this. Then eventually I see the names appears. 
more than my name appears. Eventually, more and more scholars are motivated. I encourage them to, to apply for a grant with the fundings. I think just now the professor also mentioned one of the po good points. I understand the secret with the fundings, you are, may secure more chances to get publication. Um, the secret I can publish more is uh, self motivation. And secondly, is the time management. Um, I teach many subjects. Um, I'm teaching three subjects actually in a semester. It's actually considered a lot. However, I still manage to, to write articles whenever I have time. For example, I have a very peak time. I understand, I understand the patterns of uh, my schedule. I will understand when will be my feasible time to produce article. In this particular period, I force myself to at least produce three articles in whichever language I can master. So that's the reason why I have to keep submitting my articles to different journals. Like this year, what I published are all submitted in 2019, 2020. But if you stop at one point, you will lose this kind of a consistencies to get more publications. So which means you have to plan wisely. Then you have to plan your research funding accordingly. At this moment, I have, um, I think I have a three fundings. So the fundings will become a, a driven force for you because the, they will push you. If you are not the people who um, want to fight for the betterment of your future, you may not apply fundings. So fundings will become another way to push myself. I have an industry funding. I have a national level funding. I have a university funding. So different funding may have a different topic for me to explore. But of course, I'm capable of doing it. At this moment, I have a forced funding. I just record. I have a collaborative funding with the Indonesian university. So they see the potential for generate more publications. That, so ask me to become a team. So I co-author for the, the other Indonesian uh, university. So we do this kind of, you can see four fundings at least push me to produce four articles in a period. If you do not have a fundings, you will lose this kind of momentum. But for PhD students, my advice, um, I just let you know, during my PhD studies, I published 12 art, uh, journal articles. So you have to make your target very clearly. For example, in the, in the proposal stage, you at least have your basic ideas of a research proposal. And this could be generated into a conceptual paper, but you have to understand how to write a conceptual paper and then you will explore the possibilities as you have no fundings, you have no findings and discussion, but you can generate these kind of papers. When you move towards data collection, you at least have a, maybe a, let's say pilot test or you have a, a, some of the other data you collected, you may generate some of the paper not for the very top one, but you at least try to give yourself some motivation to be accepted by peer review journal. The journal article, journal can look at this uh, rectangular shape. The top one is so little over there, but why don't you just try the bottom ones? These are the peer review journals. I understand we, we have a very ultimate goal is published at the top ones, which are the Scopus and RSI, but try to start with the bottom ones. The peer review, don't try any pay for publication journal. Don't do this. Any pay for publication are not really recognized. At least you have to search the journal information, whether they are peer review. Peer review means this journal article submission will be sent over to two reviewers, blindly review them. This is assurance of quality. So if you have this kind of a motivation by this peer review journal first, you are able to move to the next level. It's like play games step by steps. If you're able to get this peer review journal publication successfully secured, you will give yourself very good confidence. Then you will start to target the others. Following the guideline I give you to you today, you will start to search the journal in the field that you're working on. Then you will identify the list of journals that you can fight for. This becomes the target. Without the target, you may not have any clear directions even to develop your study. By, keep, by doing this kind of a target, you also build up a track of a source. You can see you're actually build up a system of a tracking the potential source of your own research. This is a very beneficial for both PhD research, but also for your potential publications. Yeah, there are so many actually secret we can discuss. This can go beyond two hours and plus. <laughs> so so can, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, 
how long we have to prepare for ourselves. I mean, back to, back to your first paper. So how long have have you been preparing for the article and the whole process? Because one of my colleagues, he said that he spent three years for one paper. Wow. So how long? Yes. I think that's about the, maybe the top tier journals. Top tier journals may have a different rounds of revisions. So you need to go through many rounds of revisions. Even sometimes maybe the reviewers may have a different point of view. So uh, you may, uh, one of my paper now is going to this kind of a process. One reviewer accept and the other reviewers do not really fully agree. So I need to amend my papers according to the second reviewer. So it may go many rounds. That paper submit around 2020 beginning. So now you can see yet yeah, published. It takes me already two years. So be very patient to see this kind of uh, uh, the things that editorial board takes. But to be honest, if you start look at peer review journals, there are few uh, journals take your publication in a very fast and timely manner, but do not take it as um, very necessarily like 24 hours. There are some journals that promise 24 hours journal publication. Don't take this, don't trust this. These are the false ones. Don't look at this journal. They may, may may ruin your reputations. At least journal may take a few months to process. You can imagine that we will give reviewers 21 days to review one article. Even some journals may give you one to two months to review. Try to imagine that if you try to amend these uh, corrections in another month, maybe they will revert back to the reviewer. The review may take another maybe 21 days, another rounds of us circulations. So you can see at least three to half a year will be gone. This is for peer review journals. This is a time we must be allocating for publication. There, um, I have one of the impressive uh, experience. Um, journal for Media Studies uh, is a peer review journal. The, na the name itself is very catchy. So I just submit to them. They publish my article very quickly, just within mm -hmm few months with the first round of a revision, that's it. So you can target some of the journals which can timely publish article, but do not try those um, ones may ruin your reputation. <laughs> okay, I know. Yeah. I see, thank you. You're welcome. May, may I add? Uh, sure, sure. Uh, because sometimes it's very difficult to find the reviewers. Correct. Mm -hmm. In, uh, <laughs> As a journal, we try to invite uh, the reviewer and some reviewer have really no time to, to review. So, so it takes time, really. And yeah. uh, finding the suitable reviewer is very important. And yes, really, Dr. Wang knows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we know, we all know, because I'm also, uh, as I'm the editor for one of the journal, I experienced many rounds. I searched from the reviewer list because the reviewers also have a, they are on record. How many people this reviewer have reviewed for our journal? How, um, what are the journals we can also check through? We also understand the areas of expertise. And we sometimes trust these people and trust the record. But eventually people may not check the email maybe simultaneously. I experienced two rounds. Unfortunately, these journal uh, submissions at my desk delayed at least two rounds of review because the reviewer did not reply my message timely. At least one month is gone. So I wait for the one month. Another month, I'm sending to another one. Another one, do not give me agreement timely. After the time almost finished, he or she say, oh, I cannot do this. So I have to find a third reviewer. You can see the third review may give another month to review. Three months is gone only for reviewer. Some of the journal at this moment due to pandemic, it slower down even worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially some of the countries they have a very a serious uh, pandemic. They have a no any mood of a taking care of a review process. They're neglecting. Yeah, that in this period I see publication become slower, not faster. I thought work from home may faster speed for publication, but it's not. So any, you guys have any questions? <laughs> I think to, I think today we are, I think doctor, we are more like a sharing our experience as editor and reviewer. <laughs> 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 yeah. But actually, these are some of the things that you should understand as a students who are looking for chances for publications. These are the things you won't even experience. But if we as editor tell you about 
you should be prepared for all of this. How is the pandemic in Thailand at this moment? Is a full lockdown? Very, very serious. <laughs> but I see proof in the office. So which means the campus is still open? No, actually it's closed. We have to lock. Uh, we have been locked down at house. Yeah, how about in Malaysia? Um, Malaysia is still yet yeah, open to the industry sectors. All university schools are closed. All students are taking classes virtually. We as lecturers also have to manage our online learnings in the past two years. And that's where we are feeling so struggled. We lose the sense of interacting with the students, although we understand the virtual platforms may give a chance of typing taxes, but it's totally different. The responses, even eye contact from students will become the big motivations for speakers and lecturers like us. But now it's something very different. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to get used to it. Correct, I think it's yeah. going to be like three years, maybe two maybe. years or something. Maybe, yeah. yeah, at least two years, three years. I think because so, maybe the connections. Yeah, so so may I ask some question? I saw I sure. saw one a paper they use the pilot uh -huh. study. I mean, like interview three people, just three people. Is that enough for publish the paper? The pilot I think study. Pilot pilot test does serve very limited values for publications, unless the pilot study proves something that very niche. So it won't be very popular discussed and this niche area can be tested based on the pilot test. We will see how the conceptual ideas are constructed. If these conceptual ideas are proved by doing such pilot tests with a very uh, fluent uh, accent of writing, it will be possible for publication, but depends on the journal's preferences. Pilot tests serve less chances to be published actually. Mm. Because we have to see the values of a publication because um, you have to understand each journal have it on limited volumes and each yeah. limited volumes only can publish sometimes five articles, maximum 10 articles. You have to make sure all articles address the topic in the necessary levels. And that's why the, the, the values and the weightages of each submissions should be there. Yeah. I believe actually PhD students uh, deserve more chances to publish uh, their articles because you at least spend three years, four years, five years to investigate one topic. It's different from our topic. Like myself, I'm writing some article. I have so little time to investigations. So mm -hmm. that levels could, couldn't be diff could slightly different, but I have experience. So what we have is experience. How to make sure it's a publishable, but PhD students may go through the necessary depths investigated by giving so much valid data that we as maybe the mature scholars need to really refer to sometimes. This is the potential. But of course, I, um, I also witnessed some of the PhD students do look at um, very differently. They may take um, publication as another cohort and looking at a PhD project as another separate project. This is not right attitude because I see this common happening somewhere else. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this is advice for all of you because you still have to see the relations between the project that you're undertaking and publications because I understand your stress. It doesn't mean it can become the excuse for the sake of a publication. You still need to make sure the publications are generated from the research that you're undertaking. Otherwise, it does not serve the condition that we as institution defined. Because you know, as a PhD candidate, I think it's very difficult. We we get stuck with PhD thesis and everything, and we have to to manage for public publishing as well. Yes. So, 
That's why I, I asked about the time, how long, and then the pilot study. And the last question, can you please recommend PhD students how to start writing a paper? I mean, how to manage, like now they do data collection already. Mm -hmm. how, how enough and how to start it? Started from yeah, literature. two years or one year. I think, um, in most of the exercise that um, conducted by universities in Malaysia, the maximum duration for students to finish research proposal is two semester. So it literally means one year. You have to finish your research proposal and make a proposal defense. Some of them are very progressively make the report of research proposal in one semester, but the quality cannot be comparable. I supervised one of the PhD candidates who already uh, gave up um, two months ago, spent three years, couldn't even finish proposal defense. Three years cannot, because we have a different standard to look at the quality of writing. So if we are the one who are very rigid on the quality control as an academic, as a supervisor, as panel, the students may have a difficulties to like my students in UM to pass through, it's very impossible. But another student who also from UM can pass this one in only one semester, but I can see the quality cannot be comparable. My advice to all of the students who just start to write research proposal or even consider to write for publication, look at the literature because any kind of uh, scholars or any kind of reviewers or editors, they will look at the exposures of existing study how will you position your studies among the vast of uh, existing studies? This is very vital. And this is all the ground where we come from. If we are able to describe the phenomenon in our own words by referring the justifications on the existing study, this will be very good starting point. That's why if you're trying to look at the first, chap first chapter and the second chapter, which are introduction and literature review, if the students are able to do these two chapters perfectly, I will see the readiness. Methodology can be well trained later. He can also refer to the literature. The literature may give you a lot of references on the methodology approaches and also different software applications. These are some of the things that he or she can explore later. But if the students have a very little knowledge on the topic itself, then it's very difficult for the student even to, to drive the boat alone. It's impossible. So be patient. That's why today I, I share you guys with the literature metrics. It's a, one of the simple tools you can consider. If you're able to make a, such a system, I tell you the two functions, you will fully use that one. It will be very basically helpful for you to complete the first two chapters. That will give you more confidence to go through the proposal defense and also for publication. Because of, for any kind of a journal, we do care about your own knowledge, your own voice. If you do have your own understandings on a given topic, by understanding the ref relevant publications published within five years, we also look at these five years. I didn't talk about it because this is sort of hidden agenda. We as editor and reviewer, we also check whether you look at the publications published within five years. Some of the journal are very particular. They will say, oh, there are so many references published more than five years, we may not consider. So you have to refer to the fresh understandings and fresh knowledge in the field then you're able to construct your own frameworks, your own structures. This is actually the reason you have to look at the first two chapters. That's clear, thank you. Yeah. I think I'm the session to give some of the voice on behalf of the lecturer. Sometimes lecturers speak the same points, but as an editor, as a, maybe the guest speaker, the value of the sound could be slightly weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it's very insightful uh, this afternoon. Sorry, the, uh, we are having rain, so the internet is very unstable on and off. But uh, however, the, the thing that we have listened so far is very, very uh, Useful is. Uh, I hope that uh, this is not the only time that we can 
uh, discuss and then the, there will be another and Dr. Sutalipa, you should uh, contact Dr. Wang for the collaboration. Uh, Dr. Sutalipa is the like, director of uh, AMSA. What is the name of AMSA? I'm... I have to recall myself. ASEAN Media and Communication Research and Study, something like that. Same. Okay, <laughs> we are close. So, I'm looking so at ASEAN and Chinese get the name very long. So, <laughs> So we can collaborate, and uh, I think we we still have uh, another time. And uh, thank you, Dr. Wang, for sharing. And I, I think there will be no no more. And if you have more, I think we have to end this session uh, at the moment. Okay. And uh, you can, uh, I ask Dr. Wang if uh, some of my students or all of my students want to want your advice. Uh, please mm -hmm. accept. Uh, them as your uh, follower, so sure, of course, that's why I yes. recommend them to follow and, my Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if the COVID is gone, so we will see each other in person, like we Looking did forward. before. Yes. Yeah. Almost two two, two years. years. We no, met in Bali years. last time for ICA conference. Yeah, we met in Bali mm. and. Yeah. Uh, and also, we met you in in Shanghai. Yes. Hangzhou. Hangzhou. Yeah, Hangzhou. Hangzhou. With the question. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yes. And we miss each other a lot. Yeah. So, I think next year we we can fly. Don't worry. Sure. I, I I will go. <laughs> if you are in uh, China, I will go to China. And if you are in Malaysia, we will go to Malaysia. <laughs> so. And also, think, more glad to visit Thailand as well. Yes, you are welcome. Dr. Sutatipa, mm. you should invite him to uh, right, listen. Yes, okay. Thank you. Uh, so I take this opportunity on behalf of the uh, School of Communication Arts and uh, students and colleagues. I thank Dr. Wang for uh, sharing with us your very, very precious knowledge and insightful and many secrets that uh, I myself overlook to share with my student okay and thank you very much so keep a you're welcome my pleasure to give uh, my limited mm -hmm. sharings to all of you guys hopefully it's a help for your publication journey and definitely it's a very good starting point and you also have to appreciate your school for giving us such opportunity to uh, to all of us to participate in this kind of uh, occasions. And congratulations to all of you to start your PhD. This is not really everybody's dream and you're making your dream become true and all the best to you all. Thank you. Please uh, turn on uh, your yeah. camera. Yeah. So we Before can... we leave the meeting, uh, shall we take a good photo session together? Sure. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 We can wait. Booking, be prom. Dr. Salalak is our secretary of the program, the PhD program. Okay. I see. Booking. Yosananta. Supicha. Yosanan. One, two. Again, please. Okay. One, two, three. Why well, we have to count one, two, three. Count a little. Okay, another, another shot, please. Yeah. Okay, three, two, one. Okay. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Professor Sutanipa will send our folder without any uh, filter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, looking forward for the looking next forward, session. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Take care, everyone. Take care. So be safe. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you November. See you, See you November. <laughs> yes, virtually. If you want to fly. <laughs> yeah. I want to try now. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Take care of yourself. Yeah. Yep. Thank you.